Hi guys, it's Raul Klein. You're watching another making up movie I do on the spot. And what I do is I pick randomly one job, one place, and three other items. Supernatural ends tomorrow. So I think tomorrow I'm not going to do this. And instead we'll do like a thank you Supernatural video. <sighs> yeah, I won't get into it now. Because I'm going to make a video about it tomorrow. So let's just get into genres. Sci-fi. I feel like I keep getting like sci-fi things. Like I don't know. It's really weird. Um, okay, location, location. London. Dead right now, as usual. Okay, three other items. I'm gonna mix it up really good. Just get the ones in the corner. That's important. Got one in the corner. Grab the other one. I mean, there's endless possibilities. I have three. Let's see. Lonely. Why do I always get this one? It's like, I know you're lonely. <laughs> oh, but this is really great. This is really good. Anti-Semitism. Wow. That's cool. And student. Oh god. This is really great too because I just had my film in the Holocaust class. So we have a sci-fi in London, lonely, anti-Semitism, and student. So I have an idea. I was originally thinking, oh maybe this is like that new guy at school, but I feel like I always have it with like a new person. So this is just a student out of school and he's just like kind of a lonely person. And then one day in history class, I learned that, like, where they were, um, where they are in London, it was, oh, shoot. That doesn't make sense. Wait, that doesn't make sense. I was thinking Paris for a second. I was like, oh, but London is completely different in geography. Hold on, give me a second. So yeah, okay, so I came up with a, it's the same direction, but a little different. And so he, yeah, so I have an idea. I hope it's sci-fi enough. We shall see. Uh, but in history class, they learn about how this, um, high up Nazi commander he escaped after the Holocaust was over and it says that he like is hiding out in um in London and like right where their their school is and I know boarding schools are really big in London but maybe this guy goes home one day and he asks his parents about it because you know they're Jewish and maybe they talk about their um their experience with anti-semitism but then again, um, this is present day, so they're like, don't, don't be scared, this guy's obviously dead, like, he can't be still alive, like, it's 2020 or whatever this movie gets made. Um, and so then he goes back to school and he starts seeing this guy and it's not like him old, it's like him in his, when he's a Nazi commander and he, like, is in his uniform. I never saw Jojo Rabbit, but maybe it's similar to that because supposedly this the little kid was like imagining Hitler or something. I don't know. I never saw the movie, but maybe it's a little bit like that. Like he's seeing him, and so then he starts like telling people that he's like seeing him, and everyone's like, "I don't see him," and he's like pointing at him. But people are like, "I don't see him." So I guess the fact that this guy is like ghost and like haunting him too could be like a factor. Um, and so then he like can't get rid of this guy and he's starting to get scared because this guy is like in a way like 
he starts over time in this movie he starts doing like little torturous things that Nazis did to um th those in the camps um you know starting off easy you know maybe this kid like wears a kippa so they're like the Nazi commander takes his kippa and burns it and still no one's seeing it and then also maybe this kid starts to experience anti-semitism from his classmates his peers um for other reasons and then maybe at the end like people start he's able over time to convince more people of it and more people see it but it starts out of only like really being other people who are Jewish and then maybe um, it grows a little bit more to the end. Why do I get so out of breath by sharing these ideas? I don't know, I'm so out of breath. And then at the end, they're able to ride against this guy and kind of, I don't want to say burn him alive, but do something like that, kind of like they used to do to the victims in the holocaust and then in the end he like doesn't see him anymore so that's the idea i think it also as i said i always like to do stuff that's deeper meaning um and sometimes i don't even realize it when i'm talking about it and come up with the idea but you can always see the deeper meaning and i think it relates back to the rising of anti-semitism because um we like I think in 2018, like, 50% of the hate crimes in America was against Jews. Well, were to Jews, you know what I'm saying. And then another thing just came out the other day about in 2019, and that was, like, like 63% or something of hate crimes were about to Jews. And this is in America. And so it's kind of like America is supposed to be, like, one of the most, like, not anti-semitic countries you know that's why i live here because it's safe and honestly as a jew there's not many other countries that i can live in which are safe for me you know and i don't think people really understand that i don't know because i do i live i'm in new york and i'm i live in the northeast so it's less here than in other places in the country but it's still prevalent here um well as i was saying in other countries, including, like, if you, if 64% of the hate crimes here are to Jews, like, imagine in other countries. So I think it also, so this also relates to the rising of anti-Semitism and the fact that people originally could not see this ghost of the Nazi commander um, is because people are so blindsided to not thinking that anti-Semitism exists and things that just died with the holocaust but obviously it's not and it's still there and i wouldn't call this a holocaust film i just would say that i got anti-semitism and i just had my film in the holocaust class so i was thinking of a ghost of a nazi commander and was given sci-fi so it just went in that direction but i think it goes into the deeper meaning of the fact that people anti-semitism is still sadly real and prevalent and people just are so unaware to it i guess in a way and it does make me a little afraid for my future and that if I ever do have success in the entertainment and film industry, people will just be like Jews from Hollywood because that is a stereotype. Um, somehow. <laughs> somehow Jews run Hollywood, but yet there's over a hundred Christmas movies a year and like maybe not even one Hanukkah movie. So... I don't know. Explain that to me. Um, but I mean, an like, argument could be because the Jews know where the money lies and the people in this country are so Christmassy, so that's why they make Christmas movies. So I guess that is a reasoning. I don't know. Anyway, I hope you guys like the idea and I hope you guys like maybe watching this will go like educate yourself and stuff. Um, I mean, just sometimes thinking about, like, my Jewish identity and my Jewish background, it makes me sad. Because of everything, it's not just the Holocaust. Um, you know, thousands and thousands of years before that, um, my ancestors were kicked out of everywhere they went. And were slaves um, in a lot of places, and, 
you know, were killed and prosecuted in many other places they lived and, you know, I try to learn to, but it's, it's so much information. It's hard to learn. It's hard to understand. And definitely now, um, definitely now, I, I mean, there's still Holocaust deniers, but definitely now with, um, Israeli-Palestine relations, you know, a lot of anti-Semitism is towards that and stuff and it's it's a really complicated issue and I feel like as much as I read about that issue like I still won't ever fully understand it, and especially since I don't live there like I can't fully understand it and there's sometimes I see stuff in the media and I'm just like I can't believe this and I have friends who are in the IDF and who are Israeli soldiers and so one of them is like my Israeli sister like she literally is like and so I you know reach out to her once and I was like is this true and like she obviously said it's not true and it's propaganda but I just think a lot of people these days like are so anti-Israel and that it's just it's hard to I like feel like I can't say anything about the topic because then anything I say people are going to be like this or that like from both sides people will be like that and I just want a world where everyone can function and it could be a two state country or I don't know I can't blink on the right term but I feel like there's a way that everyone can live in peace and it's just I don't know why it's not working and I know that both sides are trying to work really hard to make that happen and I feel like it can happen one day and I just I think peace I don't know um but then it's also it's an identity crisis too for me because it's like what's your ethnicity and like I am 7th 8th Ashkenazi Jewish and 1 8th Safari Jewish and it's kind of a thing where it's like Yes, I'm white, because when you think about race, like, I'm white, but I'm also, I'm technically Middle Eastern, but then, like, people would be like, you're Jewish, so you don't really count as Middle Eastern, even though I'm technically from Judea. So it's, like, it's hard talking about my identity, so when people just ask me my ethnicity, I will say the 7th, 8th Ashkenazi, and 1-8th Safari, because it's just easier. Um... But I am technically Middle Eastern. Okay, I'm going off on tangents. But it's a, it's a little bit of an identity crisis, I'm not gonna lie. Um, and especially since so much of the Jewish culture, especially, well, I don't want to say, especially in Reform Judaism, but um, in my experiences, especially with both sides of my family, even though my dad comes from conservative um, Judaism Jewish background um, which is different than conservative just letting you know if you weren't aware um, it's kind of like they assimilated to American culture as many people who immigrated to America has done um, and so like it's kind of like it's it's hard because my Jewish culture is also in a way lost here so I don't I feel lost and um, as you can, as you can probably tell, I strain my hair, so I, in a way, assimilate to white culture, I guess, I don't know. Um, so yeah, I strain my hair, and sometimes I, how I dress, I sometimes I'm, I feel like how I dress, I feel like I don't dress like a lot of other people, and... I, it makes me, when I do sometimes dress a certain way, it makes me feel, I feel so distant from everyone else. That's like always, when I was younger, I wasn't like, I wish I wasn't Jewish, you know, I'm sure I, a lot of people feel that, um, being minorities. Like, I wish I wasn't my more minority when I was younger since I was so different than the other kids. Um... And yeah, and so I haven't had a lot of experience with anti-Semitism myself um, because I am in the Northeast and a lot of people, you know, 
I feel like I know more Jews than other parts of the country and a little bit more understanding. Um, but I have had microaggressions before um, about like certain things and certain holidays and um, and what else? Oh yeah, well back to my curly hair. It's, I've had people, you know, make fun of my curly hair before and it's an insecurity of mine and so that's why I don't have my hair curly a lot and sometimes when I do I have it in a bun and um, I'm going off so if you don't want to watch anymore you don't have to watch. Um, but also I feel like uh, people don't really learn you know, much about the background of Jews and it's something that people just kind of know the Holocaust and think that's it and don't know everything else that Jews have went through and, you know, th different things. Um, and so it's also a lack of that, a lack of understanding, I think, is it? It's, it's a complicated issue. It's always complicated talking about this stuff. Um, but yeah, I don't know, I've only, I mean, all my friends in college right now, none of them are Jewish, I have a few Jewish people on my tennis team, but um, none of my like close friends are Jewish. Um, in high school I had like one Jewish friend, middle school one Jewish friend too. Um, so, it's fine that I didn't have friends, you know, that weren't like me, because I, I always felt like in every friend group I've had, it's been a diverse group of friends. So I've always been like the designated Jewish friend. Um, but yeah, it was a thing about like not having, you know, a lot of people like me. And that's why going to Israel was really amazing for me. Oh my God, I'm going to start tearing up. I think I'm just emotional because super natural that night. But going to Israel and being surrounded by every, people who were like me was really special. And one day we talked about like the anti-semitism that we experienced as a group and just kind of feeling what other people feeling and understanding and seeing my history and it just that that was really amazing and connecting with people that are like that and now i like me and my friends that i made on birthright like we we are we're now a group in ourselves and we're there for each other and have each other's back, I guess, in a way. Um, and, yeah. Okay, I'm going off. But I just think, you know, research different topics and try to learn and try to understand because once you learn and understand more about different people's cultures, it makes you smarter. And I don't know. Um, but, yeah, so... It's tough. It's tough. Not gonna lie. This is like 20 minutes now. Okay. Well, thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Comment other other items you want me to add to my items list. Comment below if you like the idea. Comment below if you want me to shut up about my Jewish background because I understand if you do. <laughs> um, but thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. What am I saying? Okay. Love you guys and bye.